Uh, we're going to go into a little bit about uh, what has evolved the past uh, couple of years. Um, back in 2007, 2008, yeah, can't you? Um, uh, in 2008, uh, White Wolf be uh, really began to explore uh, electronic publishing in earnest. In fact, that was my uh, original job title was uh, alternative publishing developer. And we realized as a company that the traditional RPG book publishing treadmill was just not working. Maybe I turn the lights off over there, that may be part of the problem. Um, so we realized the traditional publishing treadmill well, it wasn't really working for us. Uh, the retail and distributor channels had been were shrinking, and uh, the book chains were really starting to fall apart to some extent. And as we saw more dramatically with the border situation, but even for years before that, there were a lot of problems with how the book chains were evolving and being able to handle the business model. So uh, White Wolf merged with a company called TCP. There's Rich Thomas. <laughs> I'll start making stuff up. Can you can I thought you would juggle. <laughs> no, we're juggling the tech here. Um, could this have been further into this hotel? Yeah. It could have. Uh, anyway, so um, uh, right out of time, uh, CCP merged with, uh, well, White Wolf merged with CCP um, so that White Wolf could jump off of the publishing trend. We're no longer necessary for us to put out products just to pay the employees and make sure we stayed solvent. Um, uh, we could really focus on the products that we thought mattered and made the most sense. Uh, and at that point in time, CCP just had massive growth. There was, there was a huge increase in hiring, and that took a lot of the corporate focus for the company at that time. Uh, then White Wolf 2.0 was a solidification of this new business model. Rich and I uh, worked really hard together to make sure that was made into a proper model as opposed to a novelty. Uh, so we uh, worked on PDFs for all of the releases, um, we made sure that uh, the new releases had print demand versions available and that the entire library of White Wolf books were available. Um, we, we looked at two uh, deluxe editions, which before had been a very risky proposition, and now with the creation of things like Kickstarter, this is something that we can really look into because make sure that people who want them can get them and make sure that it breaks even and solvents. And if there's just not enough demand for it, then the company doesn't have to take a huge hit for it. And we realize, you know, we can get a good gauge of whether there is an actual audience for these kinds of, of deluxe editions. And so that's really how it, it past few years it's been. There's been a lot of trying to take some of this emerging technology and these emerging business models from publishing and do something relatively new. Certainly uh, other companies have done a lot of things like this, but not on the scale of the library that White Wolf has. I mean, we have, at last I count, like over 1,300 products. And uh, that's just a huge undertaking, uh, especially for uh, a company to speak. <laughs> Get the exact numbers. Not this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you have checked today. <laughs> hey, that, uh, that honey, uh, honey infused whiskey. How's that sitting with you? Well, I think it was the bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, and that's where uh, uh, we lead to uh, where we're going now. Uh, CCP, because of the growth and unfortunate shrinking that happened last year, um, realized that it's not really well equipped to handle all of these radical changes and to be as nimble and agile as it could be. Um, and so we now have uh, a partnership, or we're in the process of signing a partnership, the last few details being worked out, but the, the very, very close to signing a partnership with a company called Onyx Path Publishing, which uh, uh, Rich Thomas runs. And yeah, if we talk a little bit about that. Okay. In case you guys didn't get it, this is like one of the big announcements. Right. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, as Eddie was saying, you know, anybody who was here last year, we were doing one with 2.0, we were trying to figure out a, a viable business model to work within a computer game company. Um, it's really apples and oranges. The the, the, the scale, the time frame, mm -hmm. the, the the way that you know, like a RPG companies using all these freelancers. Um, computer game companies want to keep that particular CCP wants to keep mm -hmm. that all in house. We're all one big family. We're all one big family from yes. Iceland. Um, <laughs> Lots of Vikings. And uh, and it just couldn't. We couldn't make it work. We tried right. to do an entire individual. Division within CCP, what will transmedia that right. uh, was, you know, we, we did Vampire Twentieth Edition that way. Obviously, it can work, but then once that tried to, instead of dovetailing, it kind of came in like this. Pieces broke off. With accounting, you've got accountants who are working on having to deal with each individual freelancer who has a problem with. I thought I was going to get this much, or this is late, or stuff like that. Just draining the time that they they, they really should have been spending on making sure that everything was running smoothly for the MMO. Right. So at the same time, CCP utterly de dedicated and in love with 
everything that White Wolf has done and, and, and being a part of that, doesn't want to just go, fuck it. Right. We're just not going to do this stuff, and when we get to the, when, we, when the MO comes out, you guys will all be happy. That's not, not felt to be the way to treat uh, the old, our, our, our fan base or our, our properties or anything like that. And certainly that's been part of, of the reason why it's, we've been wanting to talk about this for a long period of time, but the reason why it's taken a long time is because we, we, we want to make sure it's done right and done well. Because it's very simple to just say, great, here's your stuff, let's go and, you know, and make it happen. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that there's a continuity. We want to make sure that things are, are rolling forward and, and there's an infrastructure there so you guys continue to get the product you want to. In fact, we can increase that to a certain extent. Um, but also to make sure that things are smoothly on, on the relationship level and that the quality from both sides is felt and seen. And so one of the reasons why is that even though my title is, is content developer, I, I stepped up as I've worked with Rich for a number of years. I've worked on the RPG side for a number of years. So I'm, act, I'm, I'm basically a liaison to Rich. I, I call him every week and we talk about the products and as what's going on. you guys know who've been reading the Monday right. meeting updates. Exactly. So a lot of that has been, I've been working on making sure that the back end is working out. And also just, you know, hey, yeah, this writer worked really well for me. Um, you know, th these products are th things I remember fans talking about when I was invo heavily involved in it. You know, I, I'm still involved in the community, so I also hear what you guys are saying and that's stuff I would love to see too. And so I can kind of communicate yeah, those remember well. fan first. Right. Then got into uh, as a professional. Yeah, I, I was part. I, I was a fan of uh, the White Wolf way back in 1992. So certainly, I mean, I'm just as passionate about this stuff as everybody else, and I want to make sure it's done right and done well. So I, I volunteered. I stepped up. I said I would be happy to help out and make sure that CCP has someone inside that both can help talk to Rich and say this is what the company needs, but also can talk to CCP and say this is what the fan community really wants and needs. And we need to be help to support that. And so there's a lot of conversations to make sure that that, that relationship is as fantastic as possible. Yep, uh, CCP, regardless of whether it's White Wolf community or CCP community, it's a community that, that they're, they're still very dedicated to. Mm -hmm. uh, if not pleasing, because a lot of times the fan community gets really pissed off at some of the things that you kind of have to do. Vocal. But communicating and, and explaining and going through these things and, and doing everything we can to make sure that uh, people are still excited and energized about Right. The stuff we're making. And we'll go, m m I mean, we'll certainly talk a little bit about it uh, if the questions afterwards, but we're going to go more into that into the What is the Onyx Path panel later on. Mm -hmm. And if you guys can't make that, I am recording both the panels so that way. You know, make sure you guys can get all those details. That's the reason why we're struggling with all this setup. Uh, we'll, we'll go through the whole presentation, then we'll take questions again. Uh, so now let's go into uh, the it's reschedule. And I'll let Rich talk about that. Yeah. Start with uh, I'm sure, Darkness. I'm sure you can interrupt. I, I, I'm sure I will. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, we, we, we got the schedule out a couple of weeks ago to everybody. This is something that really we worked on really, uh, really hard uh, uh, with, with the gang of CCP as well uh, to say this is, this is where I think this needs to go. I think we need to start coming back on a lot of things uh, that, that White Wolf has done in the past and, and uh, Exalted 3 is a good example, uh, which we'll get to explaining. But, um, we released that, but so some of you guys may have already seen some of this or heard this information, but I'm going to I'm going to just go over it again for anybody who hasn't. Um, if you look at, at uh, three parts to it, New World Darkness, which we're going to talk about here, Classic World Darkness and Exalted. New World Darkness is um, we're focusing now on releases that are related to each other, so it's kind of a larger set of releases, um, less individual um, little projects. Uh, of, there may be like the left-handed path for for uh, for awakening, is one of those things that hey you know this is still a really cool idea we really still want to do this so let's get that in there, um, and with that some of the kinds of things that we talked about doing even this last year, didn't mesh with that kind of kind of strategy. It was a great strategy when we when we were publishing out of CCP and there was a willingness to. Um, to push in certain areas that eh, maybe are not financially rewarding, but we knew would, would build up what we needed. Taking a hard look at that once it was entirely in my lap and saying, um, I love the SASs. They're, 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 I, I, I was the originator of wanting to do adventures for the World of Darkness, which we hadn't done for years and years and years and years, because I think people need something to get their head around, oh, this is how this could play out. This is how this story could run. But we've got a lot out there now. Mm -hmm. How many? <laughs> <laughs> we got we've got enough for for every game line. You know, it, however you want to enter into it, you should be able to find a, an adventure that's uh, that's available from drive through. So let's let that kind of sit a little bit. We're still going to do SASs, but they're going to be like with Mummy, 
uh, with uh, with uh, Werewolf Twentieth mm -hmm. things like that, where they're connected to the to the big release, so that again something that you can you can kind of say, oh yeah, this we could play this tonight. I got the book, we got the adventure. Let's go. Yeah. I think it's 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 important to note that that this kind of decision making is a really big part of, of the two point model that we're talking about, because in the past it would have been we have to play out city stream adventures because it always has to be about the new thing. But now we're in a case where. When something comes up, it doesn't go out of print. It doesn't go away. It's always going to be available. And so when you add to that, all you're doing is making the backlog bigger, and it dilutes the value of individual products to a certain extent. So when we, we be able to say, okay, that's enough, that's a really strong basis there, and build our business model around existing past products rather than constantly churning through them. That treadmill I talked about where old products go out and the new products come in, we don't have to worry about that as much anymore so we can make business decisions like this to say, let's take the energy away from these things just to put them out there because they've been there and focus more on new and exciting products that may be of more interest to the fan base, the things we couldn't get to yet or haven't gotten to yet. The virtual um, shelf, store shelf that, that drive through has, or yeah, anybody but drive through is our partner, um, is very much more, and I know a lot of you guys will, will certainly know what I'm talking about here, of the way that game stores used to be. Mm -hmm. We'd walk in and they would have books that, you know, just nobody was buying them and they weren't doing anything with it. They were just stacked up there and, you know, you just go in your browser, you know, I'm going to pick it up this time. Mm -hmm. Fine. Yeah. When stores started changing how they did their their, their stocking, so it became this, you know, the, 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 the oh, what's, what's hot this month? Everything just gets out. What's hot this month? Everything else, throw it out. What's hot this month? lost that ability to do that and I think we've regained that with guys like drive through and stuff where you know hey go through there check out stuff I, yeah it's almost like doing the, the, the it's a virtual long box yeah doing the wiki tag where you do yep. you know oh oh I'll link on that oh I'll link on that you know mm -hmm. so it's uh, something that can really be enjoyed and investigated yes, that's, that's new world darkness and we have old world darkness or classic world darkness classic world of darkness classic world of darkness Frugger. sorry um, <laughs> brainwashed so obviously this time last year we mm -hmm. had a copy of V20 mm -hmm. that was, that was well, not a real no, copy. No, that copy was Spiral Bound. Yeah. Um, we, we were looking to release it at Grand Masquerade. We didn't know how things were going to turn out, but sure, the pre-orders were good. And, uh, and we went to the guys at CCP and said, you know, hey, we should really keep going. Reaction is insanely strong. And so uh, we put together the classic World of Darkness schedule, and when we saw what was happening with Werewolf, that's doing the same sort of thing. Now we're you know, going to have a series of releases for it. Maybe even something, you know, mm -hmm. for Mage. Uh, yeah. Certainly the convention books, which is another thing we were able to do now with Classic World of Darkness, is say, hey, we know there's a, there's a sizable portion of folks who just felt like we didn't finish up some of the things that they were really interested in when everything, you know, was apocalypticized and get hand-sized. And... Um, so now we have an opportunity to go back in, and we're doing. I, in fact, I have. I believe I have the finished text going to editing. I went to editor off the convention for the first new convention book, the New so, World Order. Yeah, the New World Order. And so, being able to go in and say books that we should could have done, should have done, we're doing them. And also, here's some of the the V twenty, the Werewolf twenty, and maybe the Mage twenty. <laughs> maybe. Take out of mercy on your soul. <laughs> <laughs> well, 20 years of White Wolf. Yeah. Yeah, there's no soul left. <laughs> we drank that away. If I'm lucky, I'll get a sweet in hell with an air conditioner. <laughs> um, Exalted. And then, of course, Exalted. And Exalted's, obviously, Exalted's big news is, uh, is third edition. Um, third edition, uh, sounding like, you know, well, why did this happen sooner? Well, it couldn't happen sooner. It, 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 it was... It, it's necessary, and when I looked at um, look at Exalted, actually I looked at all the, the lines when I, when I first became creative director, whenever that was. Um, 1927. And, yeah, <laughs> back in Ought Four, <laughs> the old Ought Four, not the, old <laughs> the Great War. Yeah, well, WWI, uh, and. Uh, Realized at that point that Exalted had, uh, and I don't want to say it ran off the rails, I don't want to say it got screwed up. I mean, I let the fans say that. Um, <laughs> uh, in, my, in my feeling, things evolve. Things evolve. Sometimes they evolve, and, and like we're trying awesome. to do here, evolving into, into a, a publishing model that Sometimes works. you get better eyes, sometimes you get club foot. You know, evolution works different yeah, ways. Sometimes you get the, 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 the stinging nettles that just. Right. Oh, ow, stop, Ooh, ow. stinging nettles. Um, so, the. the whole thing was is looking at Exalted going, this has evolved to such a, a 
pile it on, bolt it on, try to make change things that are, it's just a mess. And there's no way to fix Exalted 2, I didn't think, personally, looking at it and just and, and taking a re really long time to analyze it. Um, but something has to be done. And we were very fortunate that the, the whole gang of writers that, uh, that have, you know, got the, the overall umbrella name of Ink Monkeys um, were willing to just jump in totally as fans and as volunteers and as guys who just love the game to, to try to put some temporary fixes in there. Knowing, uh, and every time we had a conversation with them, so what about third edition? Right. Um, knowing that that was in the back of our head. And, and so we, we went for that in, was it last year? In, uh, yeah, it was about last year. In, in New Orleans finally said, hey guys, let's be serious about third edition. What, what can we start to do? Like, start to do? And they, they're like, you know, do you know we've got seven different proposals already put together, and we know how we're going to fix this. We're gonna right. Good. Because <laughs> well, I was, I, I was actually thinking at power point presentation at that point. I was like, well, here we go. Here's all the characters. Yeah, like, <laughs> John, John flips over his shirt. He's got a projector. <laughs> um, I should work on that. <laughs> Next year. Next year. Uh, so it was, yeah, and, and because you know, uh, we didn't know when we would then be able to get the schedule approved via talking to CCP and stuff, we didn't actually know how much time these guys would have, but we knew as fast as we could possibly get uh, a third edition in, we would do it. And so that's why we're trying to get it in this year, uh, because it's just, we really want to get Exalted back where it deserves to be. And that being said, uh, I mean, you know, uh, what? Can you speak up some, please? Oh, sure, sure. Um, are there, I don't know if there's open chairs, I guess not. All right. Um, and, but Rich has mentioned uh, uh, the speed of putting it out, but I think it's really important to note that these guys we're talking about do work very fast and at a high level of quality. It's not like we just cram out the door and make a buck. Know, That's not what we're saying here. These are guys who have been very passionate about it, have been thinking about this for years, and are now just basically putting down the words they've been talking about for a very long time. This is as soon as we can get it out. We right. could have put it out next year or, or two years from now and you know, just keep spending more time on it. But it's a, it's a question of how long can Exalted itself just float around. And, and again, like I said, I think that because of the, the back and forth that we've done, some of the game lines have uh, have not necessarily gotten the attention that they deserved, and I think Exalt is one of them. So, okay. So move on to the actual schedule. All right. August 2012. Hey, that's now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have um, Falling Scales 2, which is the second part of the uh, Falling Scales SAS line. Yeah, here at the show. Uh, the yeah. V20 Companion, which, which is here at the show. Is that still on sale now at Drive Through? Or yeah, we've got it. Print copies here at the show. I don't know if it's sold out yet or not. Yeah, there's some left. Okay, so there's still some copies here at the show. Uh, Silent Knife, which is the uh, second novel. Uh, first one was um, Strange is the Proportion we did earlier this year. Uh, Silent Knife is another novel, specifically a Requiem novel, that is... Can you just finish laying that out? Amazingly, yes. Yeah, uh, he's, he's over, a machine. Over, over, I gave it to him and said, hey, you can do this over the convention. And as I was on the air the plane, I got a text going, hey, I just took the time. I stayed up all night and I did this. <laughs> Right, Jamie Mike. is a machine. Yeah. Uh, to, to, and to, to say this now, this is the schedule. I don't right. know if you guys remember when I posted it online, big words in bold that said, anything and everything can change on this. Okay? Because to be fair, our company has a reputation of meticulously putting things out exactly on time. Right. So when <laughs> someone is really angry that something has slipped, um, where have you been? <laughs> have you met us ever? Do you know this industry and do you know us? I mean, we were one of the better ones for getting stuff out on time. I think only uh, only only Hasbro is more of a machine for that sort of stuff. That's because they are a machine. Yeah. They're giant don't hogs. Be, don't be bitter. Um, right, so, Silent Knife? Uh, Blood Sorcery? Just, just did the just did the, the layout. We're gonna we have some stages and steps we have to go through. There's a, a, a long, uh, an approval process that has to take place. I have a three part approval process. Two of that's with CCP. One of it's with the uh, print-on-demand printer, so that um, you know they're they're sure their their files are set up right. So and, and actually, uh, again, I'd like to the approval process. The approval process. Um, it, it, there's a number of people in CCP. Uh, everyone involved in that process, uh, with exception of the lawyer, uh, it has worked at White Wolf in the past, uh, and uh, the lawyer plays D and D on weekends. So uh, this this is definitely a group of, of people who are very passionate. They're not just a bunch of random corporate suits. Uh, and and I'm on that board as well. Ago, I don't know much about this game line. Right. But on a legal level, 
I just realized, yeah, Bill does sound like Matlock, doesn't he? Yeah. Bill, yeah. Hey, Bill, yeah if, if, when Bill hits that, you know, 80 <laughs> or however old. And so, yes, yeah, so our lawyer is Matlock, apparently. I just realized this. <laughs> um, but anyway, back to the schedule. Uh, a Book of Nod Restoration Edition. Um, this, it's, if you guys have not seen the Book of Nod, and it's at the drive through booth, check it out. It is the first time since we ever did Book of Nod that you can see the art the way that it was meant to be seen. Right. And you can read every single word in the Book of Nod. <laughs> we don't have to pretend it was a Malkavian trick that some of the words are not legible. You can read it all now, and it's absolutely beautiful. Pauline uh, Benny, who was uh, the, the uh, graphic designer uh, who did Requiem and worked for me for years, uh, took it on as a private project with, with drive-thru, uh, OBS, and she just, on weekends and at nights, meticulously went through and restored this book, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It really is. I'm glad to see it's finally out there. So September, next month, we have uh, Mummy of the Curse. Someone here may know something about that. <laughs> um, that is a, a, a New World Darkness game that we talked about initially last Gen Con, uh, back when I was running it, and then... Don't say too much or we'll have nothing to talk about. Right, obviously, things went crazy, so now uh, uh, Colin, thankfully, uh, helped step up and, and took that off my plate. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow, but certainly it's been, it's been really exciting to watch that kind of evolve, and I think you guys are going to really enjoy that. There's going to be an SAS that comes with that, and also it's going to be sold separately. Uh, and Children of the Revolution, uh, that, I thought that was, no, no, we're still approving that. Um, uh, yeah, that's going to be a, a book of characters, kind of similar to like a Children of the Inquisition, along those lines. And um, that's another classic uh, Vampire the Masquerade product, right. and that has, I... We did the deluxe edition in the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. um, which we're, we're getting to the point, uh, depending on how the approvals go, where I, I'm... Now, if I say it, it won't happen. Right. But there's a chance. There's a percentage chance. That, and I won't tell you what the percentage is, but there's a chance that, yes, it will actually be mailed out to backers, uh, the PDF at least, uh, this month, which is what we had, right. what we had promised. Uh, that being said, I made sure I was put in front of their guys who were still on the review board back at the office. I put it in front of their faces before I left, so hopefully, and thus far, nothing crazy has happened, so there's a chance. Will you send us what? There's a percentage huh? chance. There's a chance. Yeah. October. The Left-Handed Path for Mage the Awakening. Uh, that's uh, uh, heretical and disdains legacies, uh, heretics, apostates, Celesti, and so on. Baddies. Uh, Werewolf, the 20th Werewolf the 20th Apocalypse? <laughs> Werewolf Man, the I'm too sober for this. Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition. You should read. <laughs> <laughs> if only I had I'm words in front of me that I could look at. Um, that was another book that I started developing and it hands off to somebody else. Um, but in this case... Uh, also a panel about that tomorrow. Right, but we have about it tomorrow. But in that case, actually, I was very happy to do that because that was working with uh, uh, Bill Bridges and Ethan Scamp, uh, who both uh, really li lived inside the skin of that game. And, uh, they and are the werewolf. Really the saw me. I, when when uh, Ethan was able to kind of say, yeah, I'll, I'll take on full-time work in this book, I was privileged to hand it off to him. I was glad to see that he could work on that. And then I uh, picked up my pen and actually threw some word count onto it myself because I was really wanting to make sure that I could be inside that project and just as well. And we argued about really, really minor details. <laughs> it's always awesome. It's always uh, awesome. There is a, there's a, a rough layout of chapter two uh, printed out down at the drive through booth if you guys want to check that the out. Tribe, the tribe uh, spreads. It's a tribe spread. Well, they're not, except they're not spreads because of the way it was bound. Um, but <laughs> it, it, it's essentially it, it's got a lot of, of where we're going. There's going to be some fine tuning that goes on with the layout and things like that. But it, it's it's a you can see the Prescott pieces of uh, the tribe art that we've been uh, putting on the blogs and everything. It's it's, it's amazing. Spencer, and they're on Spencer piece at the front. Right. Do you want that when you leave? Do you want to take one of those with you? I'd love to. Okay. And then uh, if you bug me enough times on the internet, I'll, I'll give you things. <laughs> that is not the behavior you want to encourage. <laughs> <laughs> that does not work for me, just for reference. Um, give me dice, however. Uh, then there's the, uh, the Skinner SAS, uh, which is an SAS for Werewolf the 20th, uh, uh, akin to what we talked about with uh, Mummy, but also uh, what we did last year with uh, Vampire. We released an SAS. Uh, this is one that we're going to uh, uh, be, be play tested and run by the Wrecking Crew at uh, our Atlanta by Night convention, and then their notes are going to influence how that final thing goes, goes to that worked us. really well with the Dust to Dust when we did it last year for yeah. E20 and uh, this is going to be written uh, by Ethan Skemp uh, he pitched it to me yeah. and he said I want to call it The Skinner and I went oh really Ethan you want to bring back Sam I'm in every single game line hate 
Yep. I'm an ashtray. And now I'm an ashtray. <laughs> and the best part was, after he said it, he was like, but it'll be cool. <laughs> and then, I want to go back to what made him really cool and really a really memorable villain and why everybody wanted to pull him in his, their, their, whatever game line they were developing and use him because he was just this ultimate badass. I'm going to bring it back to that. I think it, it, hopefully... If, if it had been anybody else but Ethan, I'd Right, probably, exactly. If it had been anybody else but Ethan, I'd be like, I don't know, man. But Ethan, it's like, well, we'll see how it works out. So yeah. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about that. Uh, November. That's uh, too far out. Let's stop. <laughs> <laughs> Some stuff happens. And, uh, uh, Guildhall's The Deathless, uh, which is uh, mummy, uh, part, part of the uh, mummy evolution. Um, it's part of the, the game line for that. Yeah, and you'll be able to hear a heck of a Again. lot more about that tomorrow uh, right. with Colin because he, they, the, the, the creative team... And has a very strong vision for how this is going to roll out. Uh, you know, this is again like all of our new lines. It's a limited uh, series of books. If like Changeling, they go, Woo, "Oh my God, people love it! It's better than sliced bread." Sliced, you know, Changeling bread. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly consider doing more of them. But at this point, it, it will tell a complete and, and very thematically unified. Uh, uh, I don't want to say a story, but yeah, we can paint a picture. Yeah. Um, then for uh, uh, V20, uh, Hunter's Hunted 2, uh, looking back in one of the, the seminal original classic World Darkness books and, and giving it an updated treatments. Did I uh, write seminal or did you? You wrote seminal. Wow. I know, I, I taught you words. I, I bet I wrote semen off. <laughs> <laughs> there was some editing, anyway. yes. <laughs> semen. Sorry. Uh, yeah, but it's, also, um, it's, it's updated not only for a mechanical perspective, but also to look at the, the, the current world today. And uh, and Justin's uh, doing development work on that right now. Yeah. So it's it is definitely well in progress. <laughs> we'll be doing another Kickstarter for those of you who just you know. Uh, you have your shiny books. Love the deluxes. We will definitely do one for this. And then uh, we mentioned earlier the convention books, uh, New World Order. Yep. Um, it's one of the ones that we were yeah, didn't get to, and we're gonna try to get that out. And that was uh, developed by uh, Ryan Fine. Macklin of Joseph Files fame, and many other games. Um, he was very, very excited about that. And about once a week, I'll get an IM from going, what about this? Can I do this? Can I do this? It'll be awesome. So uh, he's very, very excited about it. And I'm really great to see how, how that turns out. Which is one of the advantages we really have now, and this is, you know, 20-year legacy. We have guys who are incredibly talented game designers who were fans first and grew up with, you know, this is, this is what influenced their interest in game design and stuff like that, who are now able to come back onto these projects that they, that, you know, they, oh my God, I can work on, you know, with Holden and, uh, and uh, John mm -hmm. on Exalted. I mean, they were ins truly insane fans uh, of the line, and now they're able to develop it. Ryan can develop Mage because he's, you know, he's done these amazing right, games big himself, fan of Mage, yeah. and he loves it. Right. Uh, in December, uh, the God Machine Chronicle Fiction Anthology. I don't emphasize the fiction there. Uh, this is uh, another kind of step forward towards seeing if fiction will continue to work for, for us and for Onyx Path. Um, this is uh, some very story, stories that were published in previous New World of Darkness books, as well as some new stories. Uh, uh, Matt McFarlane edited that, and I contributed some, a story to that as well. Yep. I think you did as well. Did you write that for Great one? idea, Matt. I wonder who gave me that idea. <laughs> <laughs> We've got these great stories, and I would see them. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, and I think uh, what we're trying to do with that is is the, the, that is going to set the tone for uh, the God Machine Chronicle that's coming up later in the schedule. Uh, it, it, it's both a thing to get people excited about it and also just to, so people can start to see where we're going with these things and okay. kind of understand how this affects the world of darkness. Uh, these various chronicle stories. Because yeah, one thing that actually um, Rich and I talked about back when uh, we started working more strongly together on how it can evolve this was that the New World Darkness has always tended to have a fiction support line to sell that world because you know the game's very kind of a toolbox thing and so we wanted to have uh, fiction to kind of really make that world come alive and then the fiction part kind of fell apart during that evolution well, of the model. The original idea for New World of Darkness was very, very tight game side over here. Game books would be about the game, and then we would be doing an entire fiction thing. And I think was it the, the three, I think it's the main three, shades three shades of night and stuff like that. that was the beginning of that. And then uh, Justin said, "I'm really tired," and we went through 18 proofs of Requiem, and now you're asking me to also develop this fiction. And uh, I can't. The writers, I got to get on the book, the game books, and they also want to write. Uh, we, we can't do fiction. No, no. So we just couldn't do it, and I think that that was to the detri detriment of New World of Darkness, in that people didn't get a lot of the richness that could be that could be put in there because it was, it was a new thing. Yeah, so this is definitely a step towards getting back to that. The idea of here's some fiction to help you to sell a world, and then uh, support material comes later to kind of play in that same world. 
Uh, some Werewolf uh, 20th support, uh, the Book of Changing Breeds, so, so that's yeah. more looking to the Pharah, because we actually, the only conversation we had was how much could we put into this book, and we ultimately decided that it, we could do a very, very bad job of putting it in v- the Werewolf 20th, or we could make a support book, and I ultimately decided to do the support book because it really needs a bigger treatment, and it deserves a bigger treatment. Uh, for Vampire 20th, uh, Anarchs Unbound, which is a, a similar idea of Hunter's Hunter, it's a revisitation of the Anarch cookbook. Um, but also just a larger scale of the Anarch experience, uh, how they work with different sects, especially uh, Vampire 20th has been looking into more like things like the Inkanu and the Tamahera sects, so how the Anarchs relate to those two sects which are established, but now we're giving them more attention, so as we paint this wider picture, how do the Anarchs deal with those as well? Um, and then just also... Uh, I, I think we want to emphasize that in V20, as opposed to how M- Masquerade evolved, in V20, the Anarch movement has a lot more prominence then right. maybe how revised eventually, you know, was sort of looking in different directions and, and got into the whole, you know, end of the world's coming thing far more than, hey, there's these sex and here's how they... The right, function. exactly. So this is part of that. It, it, it's, it's taking this uh, slightly uh, second edition feel uh, of Masquerade, but then expanding on it and, and making sure that it's, it's developed out to a depth that revised never quite got to. Yeah, Justin's very excited about this one. Yeah. And then also in December, Exalted Third Edition, which we've already talked a lot about. Um, one thing you didn't mention is uh, uh, Jeff Grabowski also is back on board to help out with Exalted Third Edition. He uh, approached Rich on Facebook and said, hey, I have some ideas. And Actually, I approached Jeff on Facebook, but not about It was Facebook, this. though. It was so if you ever wonder what Facebook's good for, it's for Exalted. That's what the answer is. <laughs> well, you know how you have to think guys you, you, you might like or might need to know or whatever it is, you know, could be friends All people with. you might know, yeah. Yeah. And it was Grabowski. Well, it, because Jeff, is, Jeff doesn't just co-op as Grabowski. He actually has a different name that he uses when he's on social media. But I knew what it was. And I was like, I think that's him. So I just said a little great. Is it you, Jeff? <laughs> I said, Rich, it's good to talk to you again. And, uh, and as we were just kind of bobbing back and forth and catching up after, like, I mean, last time I saw him, he was waiting for a bus with his shiny sneaker things he used to wear and headed out. Um, he started talking about how you know he wasn't really up on where Exalted had gotten to, but he had had some ideas of where it could go if not know, you know not knowing what was going on, but just from what his thinking over the years. I think a couple of guys you might want to talk to you, uh, and so we kind of just got the introduction. When we told them that we got a guy who wants to talk to you, I don't know if you heard of him. Yeah, you know, the guy who created the game you love. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And again, that, that, that great intersection of the people who helped make these games originally with the fans who've been very passionate about it, who are now working as designers, has been really, really exciting. I know on the fan side, working with Justin was fantastic on V20. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit. He's not as much fun as it wants you to get to know. That's true, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me speed this up real quick because we get, make sure we have time for questions. Um, from Mummy the Curse, uh, Book of the Deceived in January. Now, in- January, one book. Hey, why is there only one book in January? Because at least... One of those books. This is going to slip. It's going to slip into January. So this is what we call padded. Yeah. Um, so you know. In February, the Strix Chronicle Fiction Anthology for Vampire the Requiem, which is akin, similar idea to the God Chronicles Fiction Anthology, so new stories as well as uh, classic stories. Uh, Rage Across the World, which is kind of werewolf's V20 uh, companion, if you will. Uh, so it's, it's various different topics and things that we couldn't quite get into the main book. Um, Arms of the Chosen, which is uh, a tome of artifact weapons and support for Exalted Third. Uh, New World Darkness, the God Machine Chronicle that Rich mentions. Um, let me go into a little bit of this one. A little, little bit of the idea of the Chronicles. I, and I use the word Chronicles guardedly because obviously it has meaning in, in the storytelling system, storyteller system, any of the story systems that we have. But um, what we're trying to do with the Chronicle books is to present to folks um, uh, an opportunity they, that to use a consistent and coherent uh, setting, mm-hmm. and in this case, in terms of God Machine, taking of course the the God Machine myths that were scattered all throughout the, the New World of Darkness books, and saying, okay, this is an actual setting that is all about the God Machine and and how that affects the World of Darkness. If you want to just take it and use it and have fun with it. Awesome, great, fantastic. Take it as whole cloth and go. If you want to pull parts out of it, if, you, if, if you've adopted and loved the sandbox of the New World of Darkness and just will take pieces, there will be changes and added rules, a lot of tweaks to rules. In a lot of ways, this and, uh, and the Strix Chronicles are the second editions for these lines. They're, they're not officially that because there's other things we're trying to do with it, but uh, Matt McFarlane, who was the developer of 
Gabashin and Russ Bailey, who's the developer of Strix Chronicles, are really looking at this opportunity to say, after everything we know about our respective game lines, this is how I would like this to go. And so there'll be change in the Russ. For those of you who've been to any of these uh, talks before, you know how much I hate Predator's Taint. And <laughs> taint. Taint. It taint nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Jess is trying not to crack up. <laughs> um, and, and, and Russ is actually saying, you know, within the Strix Chronicle, there will be an actual rule. How will you use this well? Mm-hmm. Not, we're taking the power out of the hands of the player to discern what they want to do when they meet a new vampire in town. Right. So, they're, they're, I think they're going to be exciting and interesting with that. But the biggest thing, the most important thing is that regardless of how you play it, they're going to be really great to pick up and read and just enjoy the whole story that's being presented inside them. Right. Uh, continue on the convention books, getting those caught up for uh, Ascension. Uh, the Progenitor's book will be out March 2013. Uh, April, uh, Sothis, Sothis, Sothis Ascends, is that right? Uh, for Mummy the Curse. I keep on to say Sothic, and I know that's not quite right. Um, Rites of Blood for Vampire Twentieth. This is um, basically how magical rituals extend beyond just the Tremere and just Thaumaturgy, but into the other clans and the other sects. Uh, also for April, um, Exalted Third, The Realm, uh, which is basically going to the Scarlet Empire. The Empire. Scarlet. She's a Scarlet Empress. She's got the Scarlet Empire in the current era. Himself. Yeah. Uh, so not, he didn't even know we were publishing this as a game. Ba- yep. <laughs> I, I read this so many times, I, I blurred it together. But no, this is um, not just the Blessed Isle, but also just how the Empire extends and how the Empire actually works beyond just the Blessed Isle. Uh, May is the Mage Translation Guide, uh, so that you can translate characters between Mage the Ascension and Mage the Awakening. Somewhere there might to, be more pages than 50, we don't really know. Right, the translation guides are always very kind of up and near, depending on the game, both games. So it's kind of a, this is the stuff we want to cover, maybe yep. it'll work. Uh, for World 20th, uh, retreatment to Book of the Worm, including new revised things, and Black Dog Game Factory will be coming back for that. <laughs> I, I, I want to talk to Ethan about that, because I have some ideas. Yeah. Um, Strix Chronicle in June, uh, as uh, we talked about. Uh, actually, that's, um, should, should point out that is uh, Stu. Oh, Stu's doing? Stu's right, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, I'll talk to Stu about that. Yeah. Stu is my favorite. <laughs> um, Strix Chronicle in June for Vampire the Requiem, uh, Convention Book Syndicate for Mage the Ascension. Uh, in June, uh, Dragon Blooded, uh, a new look at the Dragon Blooded, and they have lots of opinions on that. I'll post it up on the website so you can read that. In July, uh, the Demon Translation Guide allows you to translate between Demon of the Fallen and Demon of the Whatever. Uh, that coming is coming out before Demon. Thank you. I was about to mention that. Yes. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> do you want to explain that? It's not time for questions. <laughs> And we may be out of time. <laughs> oh, no, it's 11.43, handle ends now. Um, uh, we will get back to that. Uh, the convention book, Void Engineers, in July. In August, uh, Demon the Whatever, uh, which comes after the Demon Ascension, or the Translation Guide. Uh, and- uh, It's really the sequel to the Translation Guide. I mean. <laughs> right. <laughs> translation Guide is the main book. Um, and, and this is similar to like we, we've done with uh, we're going to do with Mummy and we've done with uh, some of the other games. This is a, a, a very new take on the classic game, so it's uh, a, a re- not so much a reinterpretation, but just a, a re-envisioning you know, of, of looking at new things and how that ties into things like the God Machine Chronicles, uh, Blood Diaries of the Clans for Vampire Twentieth. Uh, so that's another look at uh, the clans as kind of a collection of mini clan books, uh, new plot hooks, character concepts, and the like. And uh, that's all for the schedule. Now we're into the uh, our, our print and demands. Well, sorry, now in print. We're not allowed to call it print and demand anymore. Yeah. Um, project or something. Uh, uh, so I mean, a lot of the stuff, especially the past couple of years, we've had a pretty heavy focus on the, the PDF side of things. And uh, one of the things that we always wanted to do is make sure we got physical books back in uh, people's hands. And the, the Now in Print program for Drive Through RPG has been a huge component of that, something we've been, been passionately supportive and sometimes to the point of irritation about trying to get that in place and get things moving. Uh, but it's really been a, a balancing act as we move forward of like which books get prepared um, and which books uh, uh, put out there because there's so many, like I said, there's over you know, 1,300 books. We can't, it takes so much time to do them, so we, you know, we have to be kind of strategic about which ones we put out there. Um, this there is, you go. This is the current list, which I'm sure you all can read. 
<laughs> those are the books that. Those are the books that. Oh. I have okay, but we haven't activated yet. Okay, I will attempt to read these. So, oh, just once. Okay, go. Hunter Book Avenger, Time of Thin Blood, Mexico City by Night, Night Siege, Guild Book Hunters, Guild Book Artificers, Under the Black Cross, Croax, Fallen Tower, Lark's Inferno, Legacy Sublime, Legacies 2, The Ancient, Reign of the Ancients, Fragile Path, Testaments of the First Cabal, First Council, Seers of the Throne, Hunting Ground, The Rockies, Dark Ages Mage, Possessed Player's Guide, Damned and Deceived, Days of Night, Bearded Trade, Creation, Song, Mediums, Speed of the Dead, Nomads, We're All Forsaken, Story Tower Screen, Story Tower Screen, really? Uh, Dark Ages, <laughs> Theme of Jade, uh, Product Twilight, Book of Legions, Macole, Land of Eight Million Dreams, Mage, Sorcerer's Crusade, Companion, Artisan's Handbook, Destiny's Price, Best Deck, Don's Macabre, Infernalism, The Path of Screams, Order of Reason, Dark Ages, Inquisitor, Tribook, Black Theories, Revised Edition, Carthian, City of the Damned, New Orleans, Coteries, Forged by Dragon's Fire, Guardians of the Veil, and Chaos Sanctum, Venture Lords of the Damned, The Tangled Sigil, Invictus, Mage the Awakening, Lost Paths 1, The World of Darkness, Tokyo, Kinfolk, Unseen Heroes, Masters of the Art, Thousand Hells, San Francisco by Night, No Place of the GD, Oh, Book of Houses. I'm not going to say that because it's fucking French. World of Darkness, Demon Hunter X, Infinity Tapestry, Girl, Mind's Eye Theater, Vampire by Gaslights, Book of the Kindred, Veil of Night, Hunter's Book Judge, Demon Story Towers Guide, Kid Book Puka, uh, Kid Book Slua, Kid Book Red Caps, Lore of the Forsaken, Manual of Exalted Power, Lunar, Scroll of Exalt, Manual of Exalted Power, Abyssals, The Compass of Selected Directions 4, The Underworld, Mage, The Essential Revised Edition, Guide to the Trans, Guide to the Traditions, Dancers of the Dusk, Player's Guide to Changing Breeds, Changing the Lost, and Wraith the Great War. And, I wrote all this down for you. And, as, and as I've read that, the schedule probably has changed. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have a few of those here already. Yeah, same. God damn you, Matt. <laughs> it's just too good. Some of those you will buy. I will not tell you which ones. Find for yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kickstarters. So um, I'll let you handle this. Okay. Um, so obviously, uh, we, we started Kickstarting uh, with um, their part 20th Companion. Uh, was a was a really nice kickstarting uh, campaign and, and it, it demonstrated the value of that uh, it's in order to do the deluxe as he was saying you know back in the day uh, even with v20 we're going oh my god what if they don't want it um, with Kickstarter we know what you guys want we hear what you what, what you're interested in and we're, we're we have a, a, a finite thing that we're doing when that happens and it's, it's, it's really a phenomenal thing um, for me uh, and, and I'm not trying to be disingenuous here, of course we like the money, right. but knowing that there's so many people that are so engaged and being able to have those conversations, I think, and in a, in a spot where the reason we're talking is about this, this Kickstarter thing, I think is really, really powerful uh, for, uh, for community uh, building and for just finding out. I mean, there are, there are people who haven't heard about any of these things, haven't heard about V20, and then are on Kickstarter going, oh, I used to love your stuff. Yeah, let me check that out. You know, it's it's just another way that we can reach out to people who you know have have diasporaed across the world. Um, so, with that being said, we had one uh, successful one, then we did another one, and that was uh, got past our stretch goals. And now, uh, you know, Matt's writing the V twenty uh, red list uh, as, a, as a stretch goal reward. Um, it's it's obviously working the way the way that we hope to, but there's plenty of experimentation. It is a very new thing. Right. Uh, we're trying to find the right combination of uh, rewards so people feel like they're they're having a great time while they're doing it. Um, we're trying to explain to people, as Justin just did uh, last week with his uh, his blog post, that Kickstarter is not an alternative, not a, pre -order. a direct pre-order right. concept. That it is it, it it's not about this is the place I go now to order stuff because they, <coughs> the damn website's still not working. Um, it's about being part of the process. And the more you're part of the process, I think the more fun you have. I don't mind anybody just goes on there and orders one or orders 700, you know, whatever you can do. Uh, I, I want to go. Okay. That's great. I mean, that's the engagement level that people want to have. But there's, I think there's a lot more that fun that people can have by getting involved with, with, uh, with the reward tiers, with talking to people. There's, you don't have to get, you know, you don't have to, 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 to spend your rent check uh, and, and become, you know, a, a uh, consulting developer or consulting art director like one of the rewards is um, but if you can do that isn't that a lot of fun I mean and there's people who are just like I've been waiting for something like this my whole life bam I'm on it um, people are really pissed off that we haven't been this is one one thing I'm going to do for the next one that, that's learning from experience that we've been just going Kickstarter starting and some guys like I was I, I slept I was asleep but I found out the Kickstarter was there and I went right on and I went to and the ones that I want were gone already I wanted to, you know, I wanted to have my picture in the book or something like right. that, and it, they were gone. So learning from that, I'm going to give 24-hour notice on all of our social media. It's going to, we're going to launch this Kickstarter at 
let's say noon Eastern Standard Time on this day, and right. we're going to do 24 hours. And then the server is going to crash. <laughs> Some of the server is going to crash from. Right. Sure. But that takes our problem but, not ours. But the advantage, <laughs> the advantage we have now it's is... not our fault this time. And one of the reasons, actually, to be totally honest with you guys, one of the reasons why we have just gone nutso over on Twitter and on the blogs and on forums mm -hmm. and is because of the unreliability of, of those, of those any individual single one right. of those things. That's what they've definitely learned the past year and a half is that we can't have a single point of failure and we need to be as redundant as possible in getting the message out. Yeah, and if Kickstarter crashes, there's going to be a lot of people a lot angrier than us. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so there's a lot of the products that we mentioned uh, uh, in the schedule that all have Kickstarters planned for them. Uh, I'm not going to read those again because I'm almost out of breath from the last one. Yeah, big baby. Let me see it. Come on. No, I, I moved it. Slides over. <laughs> I have a question. Can I have the other slide back? Okay. <laughs> since, you had, since you asked the question period, I'll let you have it. Got to know how to play the game, baby. Wait. Ha ha! You don't know how to make your thing work. Yeah, really. See? Experiments. I have questions. All right. Uh, all right. So this, this is about Kickstarters. All right, let me see. Uh, Werewolf twenty. Here we go. There we go. Mummy the Curse. Hunter Hunter two. I'm doing it. Shut up. Hunter <laughs> <laughs> Hunter two. Werewolf the Changing Breeds. V uh, twenty Anarchs Unbound. Exalted Third Edition. Uh, Werewolf twenty Rage Across the World. The God Machine Chronicle. V um, twenty Rites of Blood. Werewolf twenty Books of the Worm. <coughs> the Strix Chronicle. Uh, Dragon Blood. What has fire? But fire has wrought. Uh, the V20 Blood Diaries of the Clans and Demon the Question, Question, Question Mark in Red. So. That's how it's pronounced? Question, Question, Question Mark in Red? It is <laughs> until we get the subtitle. That's a really long subtitle. Oh. It's, it's exalted. It'll be cool in the logo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Sure. All right, so now we have questions that don't involve Rich. <laughs> you had questions, we, I, I, I postponed. Oh, uh, I was going to say, could you uh, mention everybody's name for people who are listening? Oh, so next time right. I touch <laughs> this is Eddie Webb. If is Eddie. I, I, I didn't choose myself. I introduced you when you were gone. Yeah, and then I'm right in. Right. Dramatically. And I, I was so worried about you being gone. I forgot to introduce everybody else. So that, that's my fault. I apologize. Oh. You guys want to introduce yourselves? I'm Matt McElroy. I run Drive Through RPG, and I'm writing the V20 Red List book that Rich mentioned. Hmm. I'm Jess Hartley. I'm a freelance writer, and game developer. When they give me a chance. All right, most great person. <laughs> Shame. I'm Colin Slayman and I write stuff. <laughs> Specifically, Mummy the Curse. Lisa even develops Mummy right. uh, the Curse. Mm. Uh, so, other questions? Yes. Has there been any discussion about doing a Kickstarter for the classic Changeling the Dreaming, and perhaps even more importantly, the long awaited Kith book Bogan? Mm -hmm. So, much like Mage 20, the 20 books kind of rely on fan support being demonstrated by the book before. Because we're really, we're kind of going out into the, into the wilderness. Now with Kickstarter, it becomes slightly less of that, but we still want to know that it's worth, you know, actually starting the process. So, is Werewolf 20 going to have, the, have great fan, fan support? I think it will, but we don't know, right? Um, so, how will that work out? That will kind of determine pretty quickly. I mean, believe me, I'm not going to tease for any longer than we have to. Okay. When we know for sure that we're going to do Mage 20, we'll announce it and boom, boom, Mage 20 has the kind of support we expect it will. Wraith 20 is coming up next and changing 20. Right. Doing Boggin, it's one of the one of the books that we didn't get to, so. Right. But again, I mean, you know, uh, the Mage Convention books, the first time we're going back and finishing books that weren't done before, and that, that's a whole separate set of skills. We have to figure out where the books were in, in, in the original states, how much of that do we need to adhere to the original state of the land at that time versus modern sensibilities. It's a very different set than just making a, a whole new revised core book, as it were. Right. So, uh, and we and want to fit on the shelf right next to the one that was published. Right. And everybody, you know, like, not feel that there is this huge gap of, of either quality or just the way that's being presented. And, and I know one thing that uh, uh, I've talked with uh, Ryan about is like, you know, what, how does this relate to a Again, the theoretical Mage 20, and like right now, we're not doing it with that in mind. We're doing it, these books were Chris Thomas written out, but it's a very good point. And so, I mean, if we were to do something like that, it seems like to me it make more sense to kind of get to the point where it's about time for a change in Dreamy's 20th. If there's just fan support there, then put that into queue. And if not, maybe it's a case of okay, there's no fan support for the big 20th anniversary book, but then maybe there's fan support to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Changeling to just do that book and get it out there. Maybe a couple other 
bits and pieces. So um, certainly it seems like thus far, clustering it around the anniversaries and celebrating it's been 20 years this game line, how awesome is that? Seems to be really positive and what the community seems to really enjoy rather than just putting out books ad hoc. It's like, oh yeah, here's some change of stuff in the middle of everything else, as it were. So making it have an event and experience is, is more interesting. But again, we're constantly uh, uh, assessing and re-engaging how uh, much interest there is at each point in time. So when it comes around time to for change like 20th, then I probably will have that conversation. Does that answer your question? Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes? I know we're talking about a lot about the role-playing games, the books and stuff. Is there any discussion about uh, the Vampire Card game or anything like that? Because that just kind of happened and went away. Um, a lot of people are, were disappointed. Certainly, yeah. And, and no, no more well, than us. Kinda, we were really it kind of happened for like Five years, right? Yeah, right, I mean, right. But I mean, like, the like end just right. kind of came out of nowhere, you know? right? Right, and, and, and to be fair, that was kind of a, a slightly long uh, in the back ends. It was is happening for a while. We we're trying to see if something, you know, last minute something would pop out of the woodwork, and just nothing happens. Um, so uh, uh, the way it was phrased, I think, is valid. Is that it gave going to tour more. I mean, because it's, it's certainly not the first time this has happened to this sure. game, um, and we still think it's a really strong brand, but. The print-on-demand PDF solution doesn't work for a card game. No, uh, and, and uh, but there are some interesting, exciting things that are happening in the industry that may make something like that a possibility for either Onyx Path or for another uh, uh, licensor. Uh, uh, odds are pretty good that if we were to do that, it would you know, find the right company to license it to and do it similar to how we did it with Bridges of the Coast back in the day. Um, but it's it's no, certainly not off the table. But right now, it's we're really focused on getting the the the. the it, the legacy stuff, I hate to use that word because it has a bad connotation, but really it's, this is the RPG and fiction stuff, the stuff that real people are passionate about, but they know us for, so we'll make sure that's really smooth and solid and in, in the good hands of Onyx Path, and then we'll look at some of the, the other ones, okay, how do we deal with the card games and whatnot, and that's really a long-term conversation. One thing I did want to point out about that, and I, it was not implied in your, in your question or anything like that, but because it comes up on occasion, uh, and, 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 and changing, what about changing? Oh, what about uh, Vitesse? Just because we're not dealing with that particular property right now, doesn't mean we don't have any love for it. Certainly, yeah. We love everything. Mine's theater. With the possible Ooh, yeah. exception of Racer Knights. And what? that was my team. Um, yeah, that was. Uh, we absolutely love it. There's only so much we can do. We're restarting. I mean, we basically have turned this gigantic ocean liner away from the iceberg. Right. Okay, it's a lot of work uh, uh, just to get the various things out like that. The convention books, I, you know, are the first thing that we're doing from bringing back some of the things that we had talked about doing back in the day. There will be others that will pop up, but when you have to do four books uh, that, like that, I mean, and, and I'm really trying to get them out around the possible place where Mage Twenty might be. Right. Um, it's it's just so much that we can do, and, and again, it's a bandwidth question. On you know, we we can't spend the time to run out and actively pitch yeah. VTest to other companies to see if they want to pick it up. I mean, a good example of this is uh, Dark Ages line. I mean, it's something that uh, I talked to McFarlane last year about that, and I know someone at this table has really mentioned it every meeting he possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> and it's something that I mean, a lot of us are very passionate about. But getting the core classic like, game world up lines established first <laughs> is a higher priority. And then once those are all established, then sit down and look at okay, how can we make the remaining Dark Ages books work? Is something we can look at down the road. Right, and that's one of the reasons why the the, the 20th anniversary thing is so nice. It gives you a, a very understandable reason for yeah, we should really get onto this thing. Mm -hmm. Now now's the time to jump in and, 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 and get something out for that because it's it's got it's got a, a, a deeper meaning than just hey can we squeeze this thing in? Yeah. Yes. Um can you tell us anything more about the uh, God Machine and Strix Chronicles? Uh, what kind of things would be seen there, uh, either in terms of rules changes or the not quite meta plot? Well, I mean in a conceptual level, uh, I can go into I can go into a, a few other things, but I mean in a you know, real rules. Will contain default like tweaks to the rules and an in-depth history and backstory of such a setting. Um, <laughs> it's, they're, they're being worked on, right? So, right, I think we're, we're, we're at the right. pitch stage. I mean, so it's like, Russell's like, it'd be cool if we did this, and Matt's like, I think we should really look at this thing. So, I mean, it, we don't have any details because we're yeah. still working on those. Yeah, and Matt's saying things like, you know, well, how much of the, of the rules do I have to fit into this book versus, like, do we expect them to own the, 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 blue, the blue book, World of Darkness book? And this one, but I think, this one stand by itself. I think it's a very valid point, though, is because part of this new model is when we're talking about this stuff, we're talking this stuff much earlier than we would have in previous years. I mean, because now, once a book is done, there's a there's the review period, which you know mainly be like a month, 
and then the book's out. And so before it would have been like, okay, the book's done, then it goes to printer, then it goes to the printer proof, then it goes to shipping and distribution. It's usually three or four months before you guys get it. So now we're talking about, hey, we're talking about this book. It's literally, we're talking about this book. I mean, last year when we, we first uh, talked about Mummy the Curse, it, it was always just like, here's some five ideas we had. And re really, I mean, it, it, Colin called me up going, hey, I have even more ideas. We should talk about this, you know. And so a lot of what Mummy the Curse came after Gen Con, after we announced it. So we're, we're talking about this stuff. It's really, really early, and, and but we've done this enough now. Especially uh, when I was working with Richard Alternative Publishing, we've gotten used to this cadence of this is solid enough that we can talk about it, but not so solid that we lock ourselves into a particular situation. So we can be comfortable letting you guys know and confident that you're getting that product. But specifics are really up in the air and flexible because as we talk to you guys, it's just basically this week. Say, hey, that's a really cool idea. Let me go back and tell Matt or Russell that thing, and they can incorporate that possibly into their ongoing math. Yeah. Okay. The, um, I wanted to ask one more thing, which is, uh, are there any plans to um, revisit the? Uh, Trinity uh, universe, or is that another? You should really come to the Onyx Path panel. Okay. <laughs> you should really come to that. You'll be very happy. Come on, so, <laughs> I, I, ask me your other question, too. That was another question. That, no, that no, no, no. You have another question. <laughs> <laughs> the, why is the the translation guide coming out before oh, the? Oh, yeah, that's right. Because. Oh, he forgot it. He, he see, I, I, I wasn't trying to be jerky. I just <laughs> want to keep it in the right process. Uh, because. Um, it makes sense to, to one way of thinking about it, one value proposition for a translation guide is after both things are out, right? So then everybody, you have the two things, you can compare them, you can see what the things are. The other way it works out really nice is to show what is going to be in Demon of the Fall. Demon of whatever it's going to be. Not Demon of the Fall, we know what that is. Right. So, Question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, mark. question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, Don't forget the inret. So one of the things I really liked that I thought was done really, really well when Watsy, Hasbro, did third edition, was putting out the character translation guide so that if you were playing the other editions, you could now understand how third edition, and it really showed what were the, what were the, you know, the, the changes, changes that they had done, and, and how this game was going to be different, and so that's one of the reasons, I'm, that's why it's in front, because I want to see what happens. You know, will people get really excited about Demon because, oh my, I, I never knew. Yeah. And again, it's not going to like disappear. So if we put it out early and you go, I don't want to buy that yet until I see what Demon the question mark looks like, and they go, that oh, was really cool, you can go back and get it. It's not going to go out of print. It's not going to go away. It's still there. Yeah. Uh, make sure, uh, we have one more time for a couple more questions to make sure other people, okay. Uh, I'm not the hardcore gamer. I've um, been playing more since high school. Love, always love this system and the new system and the classic system. Uh -huh. Um, a group of gamers, uh, we were really concerned the last couple of years because we thought that we'd be dying. Basically, we're the type of people that don't go on the internet, and, mm -hmm. and we work forty plus now. And um, so, when you said that you were steering the iceberg away, is that kind of what you were referencing to? Because I mean, when it came well, to Gen Con four years ago, you guys had a booth. Then next year it was a bar, right. and then the next year there was nothing. And then thankfully, well, there was guys, something like last year, but yes, well, you guys hard to find. with the, the drive through, drive -through right. and then this year again, drive through. So, are you guys, in my opinion, you guys are one of the, the big game developers, but there never seemed to be a huge presence here. Like, you had the Wrecking Crew, but then when the Masquerade came out, they, didn't, they weren't even right. here anymore. Right. So, my concern is that you guys are on the equal footing with Pathfinder and everything else, in my opinion. Well, thank you. But you have such a small presence here. That, that was That's what our big concern is. is I mean, what kind of presence are we going to see in the future from you guys? Is that part of the reason why you're... Uh, we're, we are investigating what else, uh, how we can start ramping that up again. I mean, let's face it, we have to ramp up. The thing that's most important <coughs> is, the, is, the, is the, the books themselves, the games themselves. Presence, uh, being at Gen Con, throwing our goddamn Saturday night party if one more person asks me, where's the party this year? She <laughs> said, we're not doing a party this year, okay? We're right. just not doing it. Um, because we just have a lot of, again, there's a lot of things that go into... Moving, moving the ship away from the iceberg. The iceberg is not, oh my God, everything was good. It was the decline in the industry. And um, how do we evolve past that? And this has been a challenge for the past decade. Right. How do we evolve past that so that we can continue to have vampire in whatever form? We continue to have Exalted in whatever form mm -hmm. is now how people do entertainment, which is why we merged with CCP back in the day was because we really believed that we needed to get into the electronic space in terms of actual creating games, not just you know the, the being able to read the books electronically, but making whole worlds that way. And, and I think the stuff you point out is very indicative of, at the very beginning of the presentation, I talked about kind of the evolution and the, and the growing pains it went through. I think that was a part of it is because 
we went from a, a what, 15, 20 person company to a 600 person company in a year, uh, or a couple of years. Well, and I mean, we, we, had, we had 30 people, we had 30 people, some 35 people at White Wolf. And we merged. And the same, uh, it was actually started with discussions, there were 35 people at CCP and there were 60 when we merged, so. Okay. Well, but still, I mean, but CCP is a, 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 a medium-sized company to a big-sized company a in a very short period of time, and a lot of those people didn't know about the unique uh, community and advertising opportunities for the the tabletop industry, and so there's a lot of trying to figure that out and, and what that happened, and there's a lot of stumbling during that time period, and that's where kind of how we got to this point is like Rich and I basically last year said we will take this on. You know, we will form this transmedia division and we'll make sure CCP handles right because we know what we're talking about and we know what we need to do. And then ultimately, you know, CCP needed to go and really focus on just video games. And so now we have this new opportunity in place because then Rich can reach out to, to get drive through RPG guys, reach out to the people in the industry that he's known for the past 20 years right. and really build up these opportunities in a way, again, that makes sense as opposed to just let's throw money to problem. God, it works. Right. Do you, I mean, are all 40 of you guys here? There's actually eight of us. Okay. Uh, it's one of those things where it's hit or miss when one guy kids and everything. Right. Yeah, certainly, yeah. Exactly right. But yeah, they're all here, but um, uh, but some of them are going to be here Saturday. Some, some right. Okay. So. Yeah. Everybody's coming when they can. Yeah. Rich and I were just discussing yesterday convention support moving forward. So it is a, an evolving process, and I would like to hear those of you that come to this show or what your other, whatever your personal favorite conventions are, what we can do. That doesn't mean we, we will automatically be able to do it, but we can work that into right. our marketing plan going forward. Yep. Okay. Back there? On, uh, on the thing, the convention support, are, are, or do you turn back more to the wolf packs? Because I was involved in that back in the day, it, early in the day. It's an idea. Like it's certainly possible. Years. It's an idea that yeah. I'm, I'm looking into, okay. but we haven't we actually figured any specifics yet. But again, like I said, I mean, we are, we're Literally, we are within. God, I hope it's days of yeah. actually formalizing and signing right. legal documents that make things all. Yeah, I mean, we were comfortable right. enough to announce to you guys this is the direction we're going in, but we actually don't have the license contract officially signed yet. So we're trying to get that piece finalized after a very long, lengthy discussion. And then once that piece is in place, then we're just going to have more leeway to look into okay, now that how do we get all the ancillary support necessary for a company like this? But right now, it's the case of where books are still coming out. Books are still going to be awesome. The people you have known for 20 years working these books are going to be working on them as well as new people stepping up to help with that as well. That's the key point right now. And so I'm hoping next year at this time we'll be able to talk a bit more about, okay, this is where White Wolf's going from the, the, the more the penumbra of White Wolf. This is the, the, the presentation and the I'm hoping support next year and this time to ride in my little gold tricycle. You know. Yeah, gold Lamborghini. <laughs> woo Yes, sir. Um, I have two, qu uh, two quick questions. Here. Actually, before you start, uh, it is past 11 o'clock. People have other things to go to. It's 11.07. Uh, we're happy to sit here and keep take questions. but I, just I, make sure I don't people, think they're going to kick us out of this particular No, they're, they're not kicking us out, but I just want to make sure people who have other plans are aware that it's past 11 o'clock. So, go uh, ahead. The first quick question is um, the, I think it was Dark Spire, Dark Pack. Yep. Um, fan, online fan site rules and all things associated with that. Right. We have forthcoming guidance coming back out on that. Yes. Um, Part of the uh, fi once the license is finalized, we do have a plan to uh, update the White Wolf website with explanations about where to go for our licensed partners for this new material, as well as um, re uh, putting back up the fan site website. We're not going to have the network anymore because we don't have the bandwidth to support. Yes, the but yeah, just the here's what you can do to be a fan site. Yeah, we're going to put those rules back up, and, and that's one of the things that it's on my end to make sure it happens. I keep pushing like on a daily basis, not daily, but like weekly basis, like going where's the website? So we have this going up because we want to have things like a way to contact CCP directly with questions, um, where to find uh, the RPG stuff, where to find the VTest stuff, so on and so forth, where all that happens. Um, we're going to have the forums still there for the time being. Um, uh, uh, we're still talking about how that might translate. Again, folks in the books first, but you know, we're talking about how that may, may translate and whatnot. Um, but the reality is, is that it's, it's been very clear that we don't have the support to keep a, a regular RPG website up. I mean, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm totally interested in making sure that you know, legal compliance terms and things like that. Exactly. Uh, I actually, I run a, a website involving Exalted stuff, and, I wanna, and I've been following the old terms. Those I are still make valid. Sure that the, the, have continuing guidance. Uh, right. the, uh, odds are really, I, I haven't sat down and talked to uh, our legal counsel yet, but last conversation I had with him was that we're talking about changing things like just 
CC, we pre CCP is with the White Wolf, you know, small details, but if you have the old Dark Pack guidelines, you're probably still in compliance, and there's very unlikely anything will change. In fact, one thing that uh, I'm hoping for is we can actually ease up on some of those restrictions to, to make it a little easier for you guys to do stuff, because We better fan site, understand that now. Yeah, I mean, fan site now also covers YouTube videos and apps and whatnot, so I mean, trying to oh, expand well, that and be more, re more respective of that reality of, uh, of what it's like to big fan creations, I'm hoping that we can expand that, but certainly, for the short term, it's going to be okay. Let's get those back up, and then as we have bandwidth, kind of readdress those as we can. That actually dovetails immediately into my second question. Um, but what it really is, is there someone, anyone here involved with Exalted that I could talk to for five minutes when we wrap up or so? Uh, what, what, what specifically do you think about Exalted? I mean, well, um, because we've got detailed mechanics questions. I'd not detailed mechanics questions. Okay. Completely not to do with that. Okay. Um, and I don't want to take up everyone else's Fair enough. Just so. after the panel, yeah. Grab, grab us yeah. and we'll sort, we'll sort it out. Great, cool. Uh, yes? Uh, over the last couple of years, I've had like no time for the online fan community. Uh, I was just sort of wondering, what are we looking at for the new Mummy game? Uh, there's going to be a panel tomorrow about uh, Mummy Hood Okay. Um, and if for some reason you can't make that, we're recording all of the panels, and so we'll be able to post those online and you can get access to that. Because otherwise, that's a very long question. <laughs> yes? Uh, apologies if this was already answered or sure. I came in a little late. Um, is, so there's nothing more that can really be said about the MMO or... The, that's correct. So that's totally a different place. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I have not been given permission to talk much about it. Um, one thing I can say, because apparently there's some confusion about this, is that the MMO, World Darkness MMO is still happening because I'm getting a paycheck, yeah, so that's certainly still happening. <laughs> better you have the best uh, I just had their content director bending my ear for two hours right. like Nikki Blaine's last night my, telling my, me all the stuff that they've been... They've been yeah, my new boss is here drinking. ...changed so. since I was on the project, so... <laughs> right. uh, I know it's really early, but have there been any discussions about New Orleans next year? If, if you guys um, back there? At this point, I'm not, I don't know the details of that. Um, we are doing Atlanta by Night this year with the community because we, with all the changes, CCP would have bandwidth for it. Um, According on the Atlanta by Night website, you will see that Grand Masquerade is something that we are continuing to look into, um, and it's something we would like to do next year. But what we'd like to do and what we can do are pretty clearly two different things. So I don't want to certainly say anything, but the the current hope is that there will be a Grand Masquerade next year. It was great. Yeah, we really we love the event. We love putting on the events, but we also have to make sure that it makes sense for us. I understand. Thank you. Yes. Um, regarding other systems such as D&D that have used the um, open gaming license and the SRD, mm -hmm. has there been any ongoing discussion regarding White Wolf properties ever allowing some kind of open gaming content license? There's been discussion of that, but it has been such a low priority um, because getting the games out there first I mean, has been a bigger thing. Um, and it's a completely separate legal snafu on top of the other legal snafus we're currently trying to work through. So trying to give a license to someone while they're also licensing out a completely separate portion to a different community for very different reasons is very, very complex. Um, Traditionally, so, we have not been a fan of that idea. So it's, Certainly it's, no, but we have talked about there, it. There have been ways we've, we've, we've pitched and thought about it and, and played back and forth with, well, maybe we could do this, maybe we could do that. But in general, right. uh, it's... I don't think that, you know, um, if you have a really great idea for, for something you want to do that has to do with, with one of our IPs, um, sure, come on in. If you want to do a dice pool system, well, we don't, we didn't, you know, I, I don't, this is not a big legal you know, reveal here. We don't actually own the concept for doing a dice pool system. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Shadow We pretty much took it from Shadow <laughs> So, you know. Uh, because so, it, was, it, was, it felt right. It felt right for the kind of thing that we were doing, you know, back then. So. And certainly, I, I could go at length about the, the complexities of us doing one set because our, our rules are so tied to our game worlds. But the short answer is we're not going to have any bandwidth looked at any time in the reasonable future. Yep. So. But afterwards, if you want to talk at length about why, I can certainly give you my opinions on that. <laughs> and will. Way in the back. Yeah, in the back. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, on the Onyx Path website, there's a little stub for, you know, do you want to write for, for the Onyx Path? Yes. And uh, I, I know that some of that will be addressed in the next panel, but I really wanted to ask, uh, with Exalted Third coming out, are there going to be more opportunities for freelancers to start working for White Wolf through Exalted Third? At, at every level of game production we are working with freelancers so right. yes there's, there's no in-house people anymore there, there, there's not a there's not a, a, a pool and now we're filled and we're cool and uh, nothing will ever change no. because there's always personal issues come up people get hired into computer game companies and uh, <laughs> you know, 
who would want to work for something like that? I don't know. Right. But, the submission uh, guy. Because I like being up. paid money. Yeah. <laughs> the submission guidelines will be up pretty soon. Yep. I mean, and, 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 and as you up. saw, the Oxpass site is there. It will. Uh, it may even be happening around noon today. Uh, Ian Watson, who is, is the administrator of the site, is is already putting stuff, more stuff up there uh, than whenever it was the last time you looked, unless you just looked in the last five minutes. But yeah, thanks, sir. Hi, um, so I have a grand clay that I absolutely adore. Um, Sweet. I've been supporting the project for the licenses for a long time. I just want to ask a merchandising question. If I want to see an image up on my wall, I have to take a projector to my book and do it because I can't buy any product. Since you're getting a lot of print on demand on the, um, on the book specifically, which is wonderful, is there any way to get the art out there so that we can also purchase, you know, um, whether it's the conceptual art on a larger scale, just to be able to support our favorite characters, our favorite races, and everything like that. Would you would you like posters? Uh, yeah, uh, posters, scrolls, um, even right. you know, if I were to get a pin of a character race I haven't played in years, I could have eBay down, and you guys don't yes. get the money. I'm happy to get money. So, so one of the things that we're that, that we're looking at, and, and you'll see more of with the Werewolf 20 Kickstarter is things of that nature. So Kickstarter is great for enabling us to, to be able to go in and say, okay, well, you know, we, we know that posters traditionally, this is one of the reasons why we didn't do a lot of posters. Posters don't sell really well and they get damaged, like in shipping, a lot. So then people get all pissed off. Uh, and that's the kind of opposite of what we want to do. So, um, but with Kickstarter, we have an opportunity to say, this number of people are very interested in this, and we can, we can say, if you want this poster, we're going to have to wrap it in these really heavy cardboard boxes that are going to add this much to the shipping cost. But it's all part of the reward tier, so we're cool. Yeah, and we are, um, we are working with a company that we're testing the idea of print-on-demand maps and posters, but that's many months out. So. Yeah. So theoretically, we could say, yeah, at that point, once that, that technology is ready, uh, like I'll just use Werewolf 20 as an example because I've been looking at all that art. Uh, all the Ron Spencer full page pieces are now available on poster size. Boom. You know, wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, that's, yeah. I, that's not an announcement. <laughs> <laughs> that's an example. <laughs> so when these guys, you know, develop and work and work and work. Is, 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 is the artwork file scanned at a high enough resolution to be used as poster art, though? Oh, yeah. That's a good point. I mean, yeah. Below 24 by 36, it's only scanned 300 DPI. <laughs> uh, yeah. Would you all ever work at 50 DPI? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting enough, Ron has all those files. So, yeah. you know, Ron, would you now send it to me in, a, in 1200 DPI? It's right. is totally not impossible to say. Awesome. Now, it will take me a couple months before Ron gets around to it because it's a busy book. <laughs> <laughs> He's busy trying. Once he relaxes after the W20 problem. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Any other questions before we call it a day? Mark, did you have some? Uh, I was, I was wondering, kind of on the, on the promotional um, level, the website, for instance, uh, are we going to see an update to it where um, all of your Twitter feeds, Facebook feeds, stuff like that are all kind of concise on one location? So you will see that on the Onyx Pass page. Okay. Um, we are talking about that on the White Wolf page. Um, uh, but the reality is that uh, the White Wolf page is probably going to evolve into something a little more kind of abstract. It's like, okay. And probably doing things like talking about the Onyx Path products. Um, but we are going to have some kind of integration of social media on that page because we'll, our goal with that page ultimately is to have something that doesn't require a lot of maintenance because our company can't do that. Uh, whereas, and then we're possible point to the Onyx Path sites that we could get because you know, they're going to have a more dynamic site with more engaging information and right, regular uh, yeah. updates. Yeah, and, and again, we'll talk about this at noon, but I mean, one yeah. of my, my goals is, is to have the Onyx Path site be something interesting happening every single day. So, I mean, it's, it's, as opposed to. Isn't that the same thing on the front of the White Wolf site that we put up a year and a half ago? <laughs> a year and a half ago? Yeah. So, um, so where does White Wolf and the Onyx Path then merge or, or, or separate? Is White Wolf just kind of a label? Well, I mean, I like to think of White Wolf as a concept. I mean, you know, uh, whatever you want to put under that concept, uh, we build a company under that concept, right? right? And we build a sort of an ethos and a, hey, they have Saturday night parties at Gen Con right. thing, and, then, and and you could meet these guys and they throw up on you. Uh, <laughs> isn't that cool? You know. I have never thrown up on someone, yet. Well, well, I have all weekend well, to go. Yeah, and you're, my, <laughs> and you're my roomie, so I think I can make it happen. Sweet. Hey, no smell bad. these socks. Oh, God, um, I hate you so much. So uh, uh, <laughs> right now, uh, as opposed to what one person called it, which was, you know, uh, legacy brand. 
Uh, I said I was sorry. I, I wasn't actually referring to you. Oh. I was referring to someone bigger. Um, oh, right, yeah, we talked about him. That uh, uh, <laughs> it is now what we've, we've always really liked about it, which is a bunch of creative people who are putting out the kind of stuff that everybody enjoys having, right? So Justin works for Red Storm? Yes. Red Storm? Justin works for Red Storm. He's a computer game designer, okay? He's also making V20. Right, Ethan Scamp works for Xavian. Now his full-time job, he's working on Werewolf. You know, I work for CCP. I'm still contributing stuff. I just turned in some assignments uh, uh, last month, so. And we, and we also have, you know, full-time freelancers who, who are working for other companies as well as working for us, which we always had. You know, so it, the ethos is still there, the fun is still there. Uh, it's just that there's not a location where everybody goes into their cubicle, which, Frankly, I'm really thrilled about. <laughs> yeah. Although you guys did have really cool vehicles. Well, yeah, but that was a new place to cooler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's because it's the uh, MMO. For yes. <laughs> we have money. Yeah, for now. For now. <laughs> It'll be gone. So yeah, so that's I mean that that's so that's basically how how I like to at least think of it is is that there's there's nothing about oh that's. Uh, uh, now empty or anything. No, it's actually really full. It's just full in a way that, that was the best part of what White Wolf was back in the day. And a lot of the crap part, the running the business and not that the warehouse and oh, we can't do this book on this time. It's got to come out on this. That's one of the things I was going to say about the schedule when I was talking about the schedule is we're not like, hey, this book's going to drift back because, you know, we're lazy and we don't want to get books out. It's because there's issues that come up in the course of all these things. And sometimes we would put out books, I know this is a shock, that were not perfect. <laughs> because... Certainly we got our page references right. Yeah. <laughs> because we had to hit a schedule for a shipper that had to have it into bookstores at a certain time that had to happen. If we failed to hit that shipment, Everything the next apart. shipment for whatever book would be reduced by those guys because they couldn't trust us to hit the dates. So on a completely unrelated note, we have Geist 1.1 here at the show. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> fixing Speaking things up, minor making, sure that, making sure that the things that we, we, we kind of can take care of, we do. But, but, but you're right. That's a very valid point. Is that not only in the short term do we okay, we could put this off for a couple of weeks, make sure it's done right and done well, and it's a high quality, but also we could do things like Geist, where it's like you know we really weren't happy with how that came out, and you know, we, we Ethan was like. It gave me the chance to kind of go back through and, and redo some things. And uh, I guess it's a much stronger product, even though it took a while, but we had the capacity of saying, okay, we do a 1.1 version. We could put the PDF back out. People bought the PDF, get the update for free. Fantastic. If you want to buy a new copy of the book, that's now available. And the book was going out of print anyway. So we yep. have these opportunities available to us that we couldn't have done traditional publishing. It would have been a whole new print run. And if the, it wasn't selling at that level, we couldn't have done a print run for that. Right. So I literally had Josh Timbrook finishing up the Mage Template characters one at a time as we had a guy in the warehouse playing basketball with the UPS driver to keep him there <laughs> so that he wouldn't leave till Josh finished the art so we could get it into the book so we could send those, those the, the, the layout files to the printer. Wow. Like, you know, one time we drove in front of the FedEx truck and wouldn't let him leave. <laughs> So, until we were done. In fact, that was Josh again. <laughs> and that's Josh is simply emailing you to as you're laying them out, as we're trying to send the COD printer. The ambassador is also having a similar issue. <laughs> yeah, that is, that, is, that is an interesting thing. And I, I, I remember so, uh, we, were, we were at an art, uh, I was at the art, uh, art of RPGs panel. That's what, why I had to run from all the way over at that panel to get to this panel. And I don't know if he's here, but a guy ambushed me about. What happens when you're with art when your art is one way but your writing is a whole different sort of thing and you're getting this totally different art that doesn't quite fit with the writing and if are you talking about Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> now that's the third time it's come up. I know. So here so here's the deal, right? It's the same guy. <laughs> we get the notes from the writers telling us what the art should be like. We get art that looks like that. The book comes now to layout, and the writers are going back in because they feel like they found a fresh new way to present this thing. And now we got guys with sticks and potatoes instead of uh, who are talking to the angels and who kick ass and leap off of things and kill people with their keys. So, whatever. There were, key, there were keys in one of the pictures, man. I think he threw keys through somebody. So, that dissonance that, dissonance that occurred there, well, what? We, okay, we've got all the art and we've got all the writing. Well, we're just going to make a game because it's got to get out. We got Gen right. Con. Got to get that book to Gen Con, right? Now, 
we're going to go somebody and because I'm you know 20 years of the art guy writers are going to change what they just wrote <laughs> we certainly have never had this conversation <laughs> uh, no but I mean you know we will we, we will have a chance to go back in and change the things around. and it's and, and to, to a different extent that's what we did with Exalted of course uh, back in the day when we did not have a lot of a uh, manga style art and we're uh, be, and because we looked at the market and TNT third was coming out and we're like well, that's a BMS. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't release the same month as that. <laughs> and so we were able to take that delay and actually use it to get more uh, more manga and anime influenced uh, art in there. And I think to to exalt its benefit, um, you know, at, at that time. So uh, that's one of the things of not being tied to to the to getting shipping things out to that uh, distributor who's going to get pissed off at you if you're late. Anything else? Am I missing anything? All right. Well, thank you guys very much.